What's good, beautiful people? It's your homie, DJ B Easy, giving you another episode of the Mix Up Podcast. And we got a very special guest in the studio right now, Yolanda Ortiz. And her organization is CCFSA. And honestly, what does CCFSA mean or stands for? Well, CCFSA is an acronym for the Connecticut Council of Family Service Agencies. Okay. Uh, so the council is made up, you could think of the council as a network, and it has um, about 14 uh, partner agencies underneath it. So CCFSA okay. is like the umbrella. Yes. And all of the organizations underneath them are family service agencies, and they're all located throughout the state of Connecticut. Okay. So today, I'm here to talk about the VOCA program which is one of the programs that CCFSA administers. Okay. And when I say that we administer it, uh, we fund it. And, Let's do a close um, up on there real quick. Yeah, right program, there. And the organizations in our network, they uh -huh. help to make sure that the services are dispersed throughout the state. Nice. So we have uh, VOCA, Victims of Crime, Case Management uh -huh. uh, Program. And we have VOCA case managers that are located throughout the state to help anyone who's ever been a victim of a crime. So when you talk about a victim of a crime, let's, you know, let's name a couple crimes that right. people could become victim of. So, you know, usually when you think of someone being a victim of a crime, you usually think of those typical crimes, you know, domestic violence, mm -hmm. uh, maybe car breaking, yes. assault. But there's a number of crimes that fall under that. Um, and I'll just give you an example. Okay. Uh, we're talking about elder abuse, neglect. That is a crime. Oh. Uh, we're talking about stalking, uh, of course. identity theft. That's a big one, especially now in, right. in 2021. Exactly. Yeah. And we're talking about bullying and mm. things of that nature. When you say bullying beyond just high school, college, but like on the work, the workforce. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, people can get bullied at any age. I mean, yes. When you think about bullying, people automatically think of school age children. Yeah. But you could be bullied by your next door neighbor. Yeah. Right. Uh, so our case managers are here to help um, victims kind of cross over and become survivors. Mm -hmm. um, and how do we do that? We help them by connecting them to different resources. Yes. Maybe they need to get connected to a clinician mm -hmm. to kind of address traumas yes. that they had uh, many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, because I want to talk about the crime. The crime doesn't necessarily have to have happened yesterday. It mm -hmm. could have happened 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You have people who have been victims yeah, who were yeah, yeah. sexually assaulted when they were children yeah, yeah, yeah. and they start to kind of talk about it now as yes. an adult. Yeah. And so we can help those individuals link to services to support them. Mm -hmm. um, during that time, uh, people may have also issues with housing mm -hmm. or employment. Yeah. So our case managers don't just help them with the victim portion of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, it's a holistic approach. So mm -hmm. they can possibly help them link to housing programs, mm -hmm. helping with their utilities, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, another important aspect of the program is um, this program is funded through the Office of Victim Services. Mm -hmm. And through the Office of Victim Services, there is compensation available to victims um, for, for for expenses related to so, the crime. So give me an example. Like, let's just say something happened 10 years ago. It's causing trauma like to the point where I can't work. I can't communicate at work properly because I'm still thinking about this one situation. So they could actually get financial compensation from that? Well, the way that they would get compensation is, let's say that they start going to therapy. And okay. let's say that their health insurance only covers a certain amount of the therapy. Okay. Um, they can get compensation for the um, the monies that they have to pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say that um, there was a crime cleanup because there was a murder that happened in the house. And now mm -hmm. the, the entire house has to be a crime cleanup. Mm -hmm. They may be reimbursed for expenses related to 
cleaning the cleanup of the crime. Yes. Um, let's say we're talking about a domestic violence situation where maybe all the locks have to be changed now at the home. Tr trust issues and just exactly. um, so those are safety expenses. issues. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So those are expenses that may be reimbursed. Mm -hmm. And so there's an application. It's called the OBS application. And so our case managers can assist individuals to complete that application, mm -hmm. submit it to OBS, mm -hmm. and hopefully get some of those expenses uh, reimbursed. So how people could like communicate with you to like get all the, you know, proper links and whatnot. And, and also I'm assuming you guys also have, you know, certain social medias besides just the website and whatnot. Right. So you can find us on Facebook. Okay. Um, just look for the Connecticut Council of Family Service Agency information on Facebook. Okay. You're also on Twitter and Instagram. Okay. Um, if someone would like to get in contact with us to get information and get connected with a VOCA case manager, mm -hmm. uh, they can call the 1-800-505-9000 number. Mm -hmm. uh, that number actually comes directly to me mm -hmm. and uh, I would get their information and connect them to a case manager. So you're, you're, you're like the main manager there or... What, what's the main position there now? I'm one of the regional coordinators okay. for the program. So Still, there's, that's... There's, there's two of us. So I okay. cover the southern part of the state. Yes. And then my co-worker covers the rest of the state. Wow. And what's really... That's a lot of responsibility. It, it is. It really, but it, it's worth it. Yeah. And what's really great about this program, because there's a lot of organizations that have VOCA funding, mm -hmm. but they're not statewide. Mm -hmm. So we're statewide. We have... Uh, case managers throughout the state and we will meet the client where they're at. Okay. We will do home visits if we have to meet you at a Dunkin Donuts if yeah. we have to meet you at the library mm -hmm. we will meet the client where they are at. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, sets us apart from the other organizations out there. And also with everything going on with um, certain restrictions and whatnot. Do you have to do like a little bit more Zoom meetings and like yes. Skype and um, we have FaceTime some, and all absolutely. that? Absolutely. We have some clients that um, the case managers do, do Zoom meetings with, yes. um, their appointments via Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they have to meet them out in the community, they take the precautions to make sure that yeah. everyone is safe. Nice. So it's a, it's a fantastic program. Mm -hmm. It goes underutilized. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that's been a victim of a crime some mm -hmm. way or another, and there's help out there, yeah. and we're here to help. Any testimonies you, you can, you know, speak on from seeing yeah. people change, you know, change it in their lives and whatnot? Actually, there was a case manager that was working with a woman who was fleeing uh, her abuser from the state of Washington. Are you she serious? She ended up here in Connecticut with her three children. Wow. And um, the case manager was able to help her secure an apartment, help with um, secure deposit in mm -hmm. first month's rent, and even help her uh, find a job. So this is Amazing. someone who relocated cross country. Just to get away. Abuser, yeah. Yes, and within a month. And I'm not saying that always happens. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Sometimes there's baby steps to different mm -hmm. goals. But within a month, we were able to help uh, this woman and her children. Mm. So that's fantastic i wish one of my friends like from three years ago knew about this program because she went through you know a crazy domestic situation where she had to leave west hartford and like go to the outskirts of of um bristol like you know basically yeah. the bristol something line just to get away but the thing is one of her friends is still mutual fr was mutual friends with her ex mm. and you know just gave the ex the address of all things, breaking oh, wow. a code of friendship or whatnot. So now the young lady lives in Nevada. Oh, so wow. I wish she would have knew about this program. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so it's anyway, crazy. It's, yeah. It's here. It's yeah. here in Connecticut. And again, mm -hmm. if anyone needs any additional information or if you're interested in the program, please call 1 800 505 9000. Wow. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I didn't realize, like, I know this now since things open up communication wise and people are more open about talking about their traumas and whatnot, I'm learning more. And even what you're talking about with, like, just not paying attention to, you know, your elderly um, family and whatnot, that, I didn't know, I didn't know that was a crime. Yeah. I just saw that you're just being a bad, like, kid or whatever. Yeah, elder abuse is a crime. 
actually you can report elder abuse just like you can report uh, child abuse. Yeah. Um, and so if you ever see like a, a, a senior who you believe is being mistreated, mm -hmm. you should you should call. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is rampant here in Connecticut is human trafficking. That um, honestly. This has been going on since the beginning of time. Yeah. And the, the thing is, the more you try to vocalize that with certain people, certain people just be like, this is not ha no, no, this is still happening. It, happening. They actually did here. a documentary of, I'm not going to call out any like streets in Newington or whatever, but there's a big old street in Newington that yeah. truck drivers go to. Right. And they actually did a documentary on that big old street in Newington yeah. that truck drivers go to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really sad. And then you know, you you see it all the time, uh, girls, uh, you, young girls disappearing, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they're ending they're ending up being sex trafficked. Mm -hmm. uh, the youngest child to be sex, sex trafficked in the state of Connecticut was two years old. So this is this is really a serious a serious situation. And wow. Connecticut is right in the middle of Boston and New York. And a lot of the sex trafficking and human trafficking is happening right underneath our nose in our neighborhoods, yeah. in our own neighborhoods. Um, I was just watching um, a court case. It was a live court case, actually. Uh, there's a, a gentleman who was convicted of uh, sex trafficking here in Hartford. Mm -hmm. He was from the North End. And he's, mm -hmm. I think, been doing maybe about 10 years. And he's actually trying to get out and um, he's not going to get out but there were victims that mm -hmm. uh, were present on the zoom it was live wow. saying that you know they're so severely traumatized from the years of being trafficked mm -hmm. because you know when when these individuals uh find these young people they they groom them Mm -hmm. They, they kind of groom them. They prep them. Yeah. They, the girls don't even know. Yeah, what's going even on? boys don't even know what, what is happening. Yeah. That they're being groomed wow. to be trafficked. And um, a lot of girls, they, they, get, they, get in, they get into it and they don't even know what's happening to and them until they're on drugs. And it, exactly. Because, you know, you know, like, it could just be like, hey, I want to run away from my parents. My parents don't understand me. And then some older dude is just like, hey, well... Assuming it's an older dude, but a lot of times it is an older dude, right. and just like, hey, you you, you want to? Well, wanna... actually, that's a misconception. Mm -hmm. Um, forty percent of of the Johns are actually females. Wow. Yeah, so it's really a misconception, and that's why they don't call them um, pimps and Johns anymore because a lot of them are females because they're able to manipulate young people and yeah. these young girls have no clue that they're being groomed yeah. by someone who they're looking at as a mother figure mm -hmm. they're just thinking like oh she's teaching me a way so i can make more money and da 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 but the thing is it's like what what's the the intentions what's what's behind all of that what's right. what, what's going on and then how come i'm like there's always hey take this drug so you escape your reality right. and all that because if it's a situation where somebody's giving you advice and it's just advice, cool. But if it's advice mixed in with drugs, yes. that's you gotta you gotta think about it. Right, right. You know, so, so you made a good any, point. If and if I there's even... anyone out there that's watching today, yeah. and if you're if you feel like you're in that situation that like you're you're being trafficked and you need help, mm -hmm. we can we can help you. Like yes. there's help out there. Like don't don't feel like you're alone and mm -hmm. there's no hope. We can help you, and you know, we also um, provide linkage to organizations that can help uh, relocate people. Yes. Wow. Thank you for this information, because no, there's a, there's a lot there's here. a lot of stuff that. Wow. I'm I, I don't want to give Netflix any more glory that they they already have whatever, but that that Jeffrey story yeah. and whatnot, and I, I watched two of the parts, and I'm like, wow. And you know these these people who who are part of this whole sex trafficking ring, they hide behind a lot of um, apps. So you got to be careful with young people, with TikTok, with Ro Roblox, with all kind of apps. You have these people who are acting as if they're children to befriend other young people, and come to find out they're not children. They're they're traffickers that are hiding behind a numerous apps out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn, this is more than food for thought. This is like, 
yeah, this is this is this has been a day. The majority of yeah. the majority of the young people who are trafficked in the state of Connecticut um, first is African American girls, then the Hispanic girls, and white and Asian. And so a lot of our um, girls of color mm -hmm. are being trapped in in the system. And especially like when for some reason somebody that you know just goes missing, we're wondering why why they're missing now. I mean, every time I look at Facebook, there's a there's someone has gone missing, a young girl has gone missing. Mm. Local. Mm. Guys, we our awareness of our community got to get better. Yeah, Seriously. And, I think, and, and I think we need to be more. We need, yeah, you're right. We need to be more aware, and we need to um, open our mouths. Yes. We need to stop being quiet when yes. we see something that doesn't look seem right. right. Yeah. A friend of mine the other day said they went to the gas station and they they the car that was parked right next to them. There was a young lady who looked like she was about 19 or 20 sitting in the back seat. And this man who looked like he was like in his 60s, he's the driver, and she said something to him and he said, no, not right now. And he thought that it just seemed so odd that this girl would be sitting in the back seat. And I said, you should have you should have looked at her when he went into the store and maybe said, hey, are you okay? Because uh -huh. she she could possibly be being trafficked. Yeah. Because honestly, we, we got it. Because a, a lot of times we love like, hey, we're going to mind our damn business. Because it's not our situation. But the thing is, there's some times where if the vibe doesn't feel right, if the energy doesn't feel right, you just look. And you just, like, look close and just be like, okay, it, it, what what I, is this acceptable? Yeah, Seriously. Right. You know, as a community, as people, more than just being, you know, self, because we're always thinking about ourselves, yeah. our family, but is it, our community is an extension. And sometimes we got to think about people that's not even thinking about themselves. Right. So, this is a lot. <laughs> but it needs to be said. Yeah. Absolutely. It needs to be said. Absolutely. Let, let everybody know the website one more time and how they can contact you and, and everything. Sure. So, um, I am from the Connecticut Council of Family Service Agency. Yes. Otherwise known as CCFSA. Yes. And uh, if you'd like to get in contact with me or someone else at CCFSA, please call 1-800-505-9000. We are the Victims of Crime Case Management Program, and mm. we can help you uh, go from victim to survivor. Yes, yes. Thank you. God's blessings to you. Um, we'll be back next week. And guys, if something doesn't look right, speak about it. Say something. Communicate with somebody that, hey, there's a certain situation that does not look right right now. So, God blessings to you guys, and we'll be back next week. Thank you again, Yolanda. Thank you.